Praise be to God, brothers and sisters. It's good to see God's Spirit working in the church. This is how things should be. In fact, they should be better, I think, but we're getting there. I'd like to start off my short sermon with an example. So, imagine that you own a construction company, right? To make it simple, we'll say you own a roofing company that fixes people's roofs, put a new roof on a house, whatever, and you hire a new worker, and you send that worker to one of your projects, and you say, I need you to tear off the old shingles, tear off the old tar paper, uh, repair any plywood that's rotted through or damaged, put new tar paper and put new shingles, and at the end of the week, I want to see a new roof on this house. So at the end of the week, the worker comes to you, you're the boss, and you say, okay, great, I have your paycheck ready, did you finish the roof? And the worker says, no, I, I, I didn't finish the roof, but I think you should still pay me. And you say, why? Well, he says, well, check this out. While I was there the whole week, I didn't steal a single thing. I didn't break any windows. I didn't damage anything in the house. Um, nothing caught on fire while I was there. I didn't set anything on fire. Um, I didn't hurt anybody. I didn't hurt anybody or cause anybody any kind of harm. So for that, I think you should pay me. So what would you say as the boss if that worker came to you? I think the question is not if you would fire him. I think the question is how fast you would kick him out the door, right? And what if he said, you know what, in fact, I deserve a raise. I think you should pay me twice as much because I didn't do anything bad all week. How would you feel about that kind of worker? If you were a really good boss and you were really understanding, you'd probably sit him down and say, hey, listen, buddy, maybe you don't understand how this works, but... I hired you and I'm paying you not so you can sit around and just not do bad stuff, but so that you can be productive for my company, so that you can be uh, fruitful. And that's the key word that I want to focus on today. I guess you could say the, the theme of my sermon is God didn't save us just so we could not do bad things, but he saved us so we could be fruitful for the kingdom and do good things. Another example to kind of illustrate this with the um, fruitfulness, the tree, right? Imagine if you were the owner of an orchard and you planted a tree that was supposed to bring apples, right? An apple tree. And it grew up and you were taking care of it and you put years of effort into it. You watered it, you fertilized it, you sprayed the bugs when they, when they attacked it. And then you came to the tree when it was time to bring fruit and assuming trees could talk, you, you told it, hey, where, where are the apples? I've been waiting for apples this whole time. And the tree told you, well, I don't have any apples, but hey, I didn't bring any poisonous fruit. I didn't, no scorpions grew off of me. No rattlesnakes grew off of me. I think you should still take care of me. How fast do you think you'd cut down that tree for being so obnoxious? I think a lot of times in our Christian lives, we're kind of the same way. We're like, well, God, I wasn't really, I didn't do anything bad this week, so you should bless me. You should reward me. I'm waiting for it. In fact, I was really good this week, so you should bless me extra. And a lot of times we get so caught up in this that we don't even realize that God didn't just save us so we would kind of marinate in our own holiness, which we're supposed to be holy, no doubt about that, but that's not the only goal that he set before us. So it's really important that we kind of be, not be the, the tree that's like that. I want to read a couple of verses in John. I think most people are probably familiar with this passage. It's in chapter 15, the first few verses. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, so that it may bear more fruit. So he says, every unfruitful branch, the gardener cuts away. And a lot of times, you've probably noticed in Christianity, if you're not doing something for God, if you're not involved in ministry, it's really hard to stay holy. You start sinning, and you start doing useless things, and eventually, you kind of slip away. And those of you who are in ministry, you probably know the opposite is true also. Like if you teach Sunday school or if you're, if, you know, for the people who preach, like if I know that I have to preach next week, I know that I can't slack off. I can't waste any time. I can't do fruitless things. I know that there's a responsibility for me standing up here and talking to a thousand people who have, you know, better things to do with their time than listen to me if I'm not being filled with the Holy Spirit, right? Ministry keeps you accountable. Doing something for God keeps you accountable. Uh, another mistake people kind of get into, though, is they think, just because I do some good things, like just because I'm in ministry, let's say I'm a Sunday school teacher, I sing in the choir, I visit sick people, I can do those things, and that balances out some bad stuff that I can do. They think that you can sin a little bit if you do more good things for God to balance it out. That would kind of be like a construction worker example, where he comes at the end of the week and he says, 
Yeah, listen, I finished the roof, but I also, I, uh, I set the car, the car on fire, the people's car. Just, I felt that it needed to be done. I'm not sorry for it. I think you'd fire him even faster and you'd probably send him to jail, right? That kind of worker is not needed in God's kingdom either. One who does good things and bad things. Jesus himself said you can't serve two masters. You either hate one or start resenting the other. So, okay, that's all great. We know what we're not supposed to do, but what kind of things are we supposed to do? Because being fruitful, just doing things for God is a really vague term, right? That doesn't say anything, you know. You can't just walk out and say, I'm, I'm being fruitful now. You have to do things, right? So, I've kind of divided into three categories. The first one would be ministry. Jesus gave us this great commission. He said, go and make disciples of all nations. Teach all the nations about about him and bring them to him. So that's the biggest thing that we have to do to be fruitful. We have to teach other people about God and church ministry, whether it's being in the choir or being a Sunday school teacher or being a preacher or being whatever you do in church, even things like maintaining the church grounds, cleaning up, that all serves that purpose of letting the world know that Jesus is God and that he loves them. So that's, that's the big thing. And it, it doesn't have to be something huge. Like you might say, well, I mean, I'm not good enough to be a teacher. I'm not... Uh, I don't want to be a preacher either. But the thing is, ministry is not just that. There's ministries that are small ones, but that are very effective. Like, for example, um, maybe some of you didn't know this, but before this service at about 10.15, we have a prayer in, the, in room number six by the pool. It's the one with the big picture of the world on the back of it. And usually, when we come in there, there's about, you know, maybe five to ten people. And it's kind of sad because there's, you know, thousands of people here at the second service, and only a handful show up to pray. And a lot of times people come to church and they say, well, I mean, it was boring. I didn't really get anything out of it. But let me tell you like a little secret that I found. If you come to prayer before church and you pray for the church to be blessed, you pray for all the preachers and singers to be blessed and you intercede before God for the service, all of a sudden church becomes really interesting because now you're invested into it. You've put your own little piece of effort into church and now all of a sudden it just gets, you know, 100% more interesting. And I think that's a ministry everybody can do. Another ministry everybody can do is praying for other people, right? When we pray, we mostly pray for ourselves. You know, God, I want to understand the Bible. I want to be holy. I want to be rich. I want to be healthy. And that's fine. Like, I pray for that stuff all the time. But when we pray for other people, like family, friends, people who are going through a hard time, that's a sacrifice, right? We have to tear away from our own time and say, God, you know, help my brother, help my sister, help my buddy over here because he needs it. And when we do that, that's also a ministry to other people. So the first category is ministry, the second is helping others. When we do things like we give money to those in need, we help somebody with a job if they can't do it themselves, we even say an encouraging word to somebody when they need it, that's another thing that we do to serve God and become fruitful for his kingdom. Uh, for example, there's a couple of daily things that, because I know this is like a, a hard thing being fruitful, right? The devil attacks you, you get distracted all the time by the troubles of life and all that. But there's a couple of little daily things that I say, I'm going to do this every day, no matter what, and that's part of my, like, fruit bringing. So one of those things, again, is um, saying something encouraging to somebody. That doesn't mean you have to, you know, go up and hug somebody and tell them they're a great person, but just slip it in kind of. Say, hey, you know, I like how that shirt looks on you, or hey, good job getting that new car. I'm glad you're such a hard worker. Or, you know, girls tell each other they're pretty all the time. That's, that's probably a good thing. Um, and it, just doing that will kind of brighten somebody's day. I mean, think about it. If you do that to one person every day, and you do that seven days, and there's a thousand people here, at the end of the week, that's seven thousand people who have been encouraged. And I think that's, that's a pretty decent chunk of work that's been done for God's kingdom. Um, so the, one thing is to encourage someone every day. The other thing is to pray and read the Bible, because that's, that's totally important. I mean, when we know God, Peter writes in his epistle that we need to have fruit in the knowledge of God. So being fruitful also means getting to know God more. Another thing that I try to do every day is pray for friends and family because, like I said, it's super easy to pray for yourself. It's a lot more difficult to remember and consistently pray for people who you need, who need prayer. And a lot of times, like, I look at my friends' lives or, you know, somebody in my family and think, man, they have it a lot harder than me. I really should pray for this person because I have it easy compared to this guy. Um, so those, that's just my daily thing. And I would encourage you, I mean, I keep this on my phone, so I keep it, you know, on hand so I, it reminds me all the time. And I would encourage something like that just, it would make your life better, make a lot of other lives better if we just started doing this every day. Even the little things, it's those little things that add up to make a big difference. And you might say, okay, that's great, man, that's, that's awesome, but how do I get the power? You know, the devil attacks, I get distracted by worldly ambitions, I get distracted by the job, I, I come home annoyed and tired and I don't want to do anything. 
Well, the key to being fruitful in God's kingdom is the same as pretty much every other secret to victory in Christianity. There's no shortcuts, right? Uh, I think like a year ago, I preached something about like the four basics of Christianity. It's one is praying, two is reading the Bible, three is being around Christian people, having Christian fellowship, and four is not sinning. If you cover those four bases, you're pretty much guaranteed success because then God will reveal himself to you and you'll know him more and you'll have success in every Christian thing that you do. I mean, there's not really any shortcuts. A lot of times it's like, it's kind of like weight loss, you know? If you want to lose weight, you eat less calories than you burn, right? It's very, very simple, but it's not easy. And there's multi-billion dollar industries built on selling people shortcuts, you know, 39.95 and we'll give you six easy steps to a six pack in five minutes. And usually it's just a scam or it's a system that you still have to work hard and do those basics. And a lot of times I feel like in ministry and in preaching, we kind of like, we set up all these complicated systems, but in reality, there's only a couple of basics that people need to know if they really wanna be fruitful and successful. And again, that's reading, praying consistently, not being around sinful people, which means surrounding yourself with a good Christian group and staying out of sin. So I hope this short word has encouraged you to be more fruitful and not just kind of, um, you know, think that you're earning a reward because you're not doing a lot of bad stuff because I think a lot of people really fall into that and I hope that, that blesses you and I hope that every one of you takes the time to encourage somebody to keep up with your tithes and your financial donations um, and I really hope to see more people at prayer next week. Amen.